back to Salonis Cellosphere here out of Munich 2024. We're having a great time, and I think one of the best things that we've been seeing is all the innovation that's been going on. And I, it's, we're going to continue to roll through, I think, the process, intelligence, at the center of things, we've been talking about it for quite some time, that you can't really do AI if you don't understand the process, and building an agent with no, no. process makes no sense. So I'm really excited because I think, again, this one, this topic that we're going to go dive into here really takes me back to my roots, and it really ties together some things that I had seen that were broken when I was on a finance, at a financial services company, and we did a lot of EDI. I'm welcoming in... Uh, Jorg, Pablo, and George, who are going to help me actually break down. You guys got the Game Changers Award, and you guys are from three different companies. We're able to work together to really overcome some of the challenges of process across this and having those agreements and understanding that visibility across that. So, Jorg, why don't you start by kind of giving us an idea of the, the total, what was going on and, you know, well, why you won the award. Let's, let's go with that. <laughs> well, why we won this award? Because I think it was just, it's an innovative uh, mm -hmm. collaboration, what we have yep. done. I mean, yep. we have crossed the borders across companies, not only looking at Conrad as into its, its own three, three key processes, but also expanding this to two of our most um, innovative suppliers, I call it that way. Yeah to go across the borders and to find real process innovation and process uh, efficiency gains in this chain. And I mean, that's a very amazing thing. So, so I mean, TD Cinex, I know them, it's a large distributor. It, it seems like this is pretty innovative for what TD is trying to lean into and can help throughout that entire process. How do, how do you see that? I mean, we agree. I think one of a like common request from the customer that we get is, for example, where my goods will get delivered? That's a simple question, but very complex. And as just said before, I mean, we cannot answer that question ourselves. I mean, we need to go beyond boundaries. I mean, getting data from our suppliers, then process, and then to our customers, and then to the end customers. And I think that a key element, and I think it's the only way to get there, is to connect with the other partners. Yeah, and just to jump in there, I mean, it's, it's connecting the chain. It's the, the customer. Mm -hmm. we, we are your, or you are our customer, or vice versa. Yeah. And so, so you can you can spotlight up to the real customer and get him to get to understand what yeah. he's doing, what yeah. he wants. I think it's obvious. No process in our branch ends starts and ends within our company. So we were always limited what we could see and what we could act on. And now we open it up, open it up to the whole process chain. Now we can look really from the factory down to the customer with all steps in between. That's the potential, I think. And that was the reason you wanted to invent on this. And for me, the interesting part is that the realization moment that you realize that we cannot do it by yourself, that you need to connect to the others. As I mean, we have EBI and systems, but I think this network broke those boundaries, and then we can go into that thing that goes from the beginning to the end. I mean, it doesn't matter how many partners are in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, again, when you look at EDI, it's just point to point. There's no, you know, you don't know what happens on that other side, and you have to rely on, and obviously you're partnered up, so you're relying on it yeah. anyways, but it's, hey, maybe there's something that can be done because there's rework because of data gets corrupted or doesn't get there in the right order or something like that. What really, what's the flow through network from a process perspective through the three companies? Well, let me start here. So it's, it's us issuing this purchase order, requesting some goods that our customer wants from PDC and Infrastructure, and then transferring this on to our partners. And, and what we expect back is like, Simple things like a dispatch advice, uh, order confirmation, an invoice, and maybe some information in between, uh, you know, on delays, on shortages, and so on. And, and at the end of the day, we want to use the product that we receive to pass this on to our end customer and make him happy or her. <laughs> well, I think that's that's the whole thing, right? It's yeah. like you're all customers of each other. Yes. yes. And yes, it's it's also been. <laughs> 
ultimately the end user of the product. How, how do you look at it from a TV perspective that, you know, again, this is it's pretty new. I mean, TV has had been involved with marketplaces and other stuff for a bit now. Uh, you know, all the hyperscalers are out there pushing those, but this is really like real time process optimization across that. Well, it's all right. And I, for me, it's an evolution. I mean, EBI, we don't know what it is. I mean, it's good, it has, but it has limitations. I mean, and also has a cost. I mean, you need to go one by one to implement EBI. API somehow is a kind of a next level of that. But I think this is the next generation. I mean, it's not only that we sell data, but in a common dictionary, you don't need to do customization. We only speak the same language, and that makes a difference. Yeah. If many parties can get there, I think that would be a major change. And, and how does it help at your end of that whole spectrum? Because it must be able to give you more visibility into what's coming down yeah. towards you. Yeah, what, what we realized when we went into the cooperation and core innovation is that, that we are not as good in the processes as we thought before. In the same moment we had when we first implemented process mining, you always think how good you are until you hit reality. And the same happens with the network. You hit reality and then you see, oh, we could improve. And then that was the trigger for our cooperation. I think Conrad realized reality, how much improvement can, can be achieved for the internal process as well. You know, if the supply chain process is not good, your internal process can only grow to a special, to a certain level of excellence. And then you're limited because we are not delivering as we should. And then Conrad can't get to the top level. And so I think it's natural that you consider going into the whole, whole chain and it gives us advantages because we gain, if you know, it, much of process mining is to avoid manual work, and we had a bit too much manual work in just the all around the EDI process. Something fails, and the, the most understandable thing is a product might be on the end of life for us, but for Conrad, if they don't have the information in real time, they might still try to order it or might be often even offer it to the customer, but it's really bad for Conrad and for us, and so it's natural. It has been a need for a long time to break this barrier between the companies. Yeah. And so, to me, when I when I look at this, it takes a lot of trust between the companies as well. I mean, this, to me, you can't be more partnered if you're not if you're connecting up your processes and basically showing and opening up what's going on on the other side. Yeah. How did you how did you get over that barrier? Well, we. Maybe because there has always been a good relationship here. Yeah. We like each other. Yeah, we like each other. Yeah, that's right. That's definitely good. And, that's and on the other side, stuff. I mean, it's 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 the open-minded, um, um, the open-minded setup here that every company wants to become better and serve customers better because this is where we all live from. That we also the ones who are paying our bills. Yeah. Yeah. And um, to be honest, it is uh, quite astonishing how often we got into this. You know, not 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 um, not being afraid of talking about failures, mm -hmm. but talking about opportunities, yes, yes. where to get better, where to improve in a in a in a in a chain. And also, for sure, we get some internal fear or resistance about this thing. But then, I mean, you can prove very easily that just uh, the information you want with the people you want. And I think that's a very powerful message. And if you think of that, I prefer this much more than people in the organization sending mails with attachments with zero control. Yeah. I mean, the information here is very well controlled, yeah. I mean, legally protected. But I think, yeah, there's a bit of fear, but this is the fear of something new. But when you prove it works and it's very controlled, I think it's about very easy. Yeah, innovative, innovative, uh, um, esprit, or how you call that? Esprit and core. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's living from open minded yeah. and yeah. open communication. Yeah. And the ones that are hiding the information, they cannot innovate. Right. Yeah. And for us, the big advantage was from a principal point of view, it's not as open as blockchain. The blockchain had, in my point of view, to fail because it was too open and we didn't have any control about the data share. And we just can control how much data we share. Everybody gains as much as possible, but still we have control what's going 
to the partners in the in the network, and that makes a big difference, and that's a big advantage, I see. Yes, because, because somehow Conrad is now living in information provided by our partners, but only the ones that we need for this special uh, topic, not more and not less. And this gives focus on the one side, and it gives reliability that not everything is shared. So I was going to ask about that, because to me, some people may be saying, okay, well, how is it secure? How is it protected? You were also one of the part of your customers prior to this, so it was connecting those up exactly. in a particular, almost like a, uh, a virtual private process yeah. group. Kind of yeah. like, yeah. How, did, how does that work, and, and how did you overcome some of those security concerns that you've been privacy concerns that you might have? Well, first of all, there is nothing before, uh, not, nothing um, that is not signed or approved mm -hmm. by, by our legal department mm -hmm. on the one side. Right. We have to sign that yep. we share data and the age and stuff like that. But the second thing is that you can really mindfully choose whom you share the data to and what you share. Yeah. And um, um, based on this trustful relationship, I mean, that, there's no question behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just, do you think for TD, this is kind of a, a, a foot in the door where you could see more of this? As I well? hope so. Yeah. That's why we are here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, for me, the goal of this whole thing was to prove that this works. And yeah. actually, it does work. So now, what we need to bring is more partners into the model. Because we need data and partners because it's a network effect. I mean, the more people there, the more data, the more value. Because yeah. 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 Okay. I could see how the more visibility you have up and down the stack from producer all the way mm -hmm. to the seller of the end user, that this can help you, you all be able to you know, plan your own capacity yeah. as well Never. and have better visibility across that because you know how, if mm -hmm. something comes in, how fast it's going to get back to yeah. here and what those... Is that one of the goals that you had out of this as well was to have better visibility in your, your the, the entire process so that you could say, okay, I have confidence in when I put this order in, it's, you know, I'm not going to run into an out of stock mm -hmm. or a end of life issue. Mm -hmm. Well, the first part was to synchronize and harmonize, let's say, delivery dates and all the yeah. communication around that. But what you're speaking about is may maybe one, one of the next steps is mm -hmm. leverage, okay, what, what do we offer our customers? 2,000 pieces, for example. Is this something that is available at our partners? Mm -hmm. Or are they even capable of re restocking this? Because and may, maybe it's not an next case, but uh, one of the cases that we run into is we, we you know, have a special price offer. We just have marketing on it. Um, and for some reason, this, this is not you know, aligned within the, uh, in the purchasing chain or the supply chain, and then we end up with having 2,000 orders and only 500 or 600 to be served to the customers. And then we're pointing to our suppliers, hey, what's going on here? Well, that, that's not how we, how we need to do it in the future. Maybe let's, let's get predictive. If we see there's an upcoming shortage, maybe get down the amount of products that we serve to or offer to our customers to make it transparent and reliability. No, I think reliability. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a great place to kind of go to the final question here, which is hopefully, you know, you're a game changer this year. Next year, hopefully, you come back as a game changer again and continue to innovate. What do you see that you could be doing this time next year you, that you might be here talking about that you can't talk about today. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm getting yeah. curveball for the yeah. last question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult one. I mean, maybe simple part is talking about the networks that function to different use cases. And I think there's a source of potential. I mean, one of them, for example, is open invoices, reconciliation. I mean, many times we have these views, right, wrong, different products, whatever. But we realize too late that has impact in operations, phone calls, people upset and also in the working capital. If there's a difference, I want to know sooner than later. But not only transactional data, master data. As you say, initial SPUs, prices. I mean, we have broad portfolios. Have, it's very dynamic. If we can get that in advance, and that will simplify all the operations and also much of any customer satisfaction. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Or? Yeah, you know, we couldn't finish this talk without the business password. Yeah. And at the end, you could put some AI on the interaction between the companies. <laughs> I was going to say, there was news work for the companies and connect the companies. Yeah. And why? I, 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 
you, I'm very good. You brought AI in, otherwise we're getting kicked off the internet. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that. How about yourself? To finish it up. Where, where do you want to be staying next year? Well, uh, in addition to these things, because um, I don't want to repeat that. I mean, expand this network because we're now on the supply side. On the other side, to our customers, because then we have a real end and end transparency. Yeah. And um, we have, yeah, we are not only selling our own products, we also sell marketplace products, uh, third party sellers, maybe also to integrate somehow this aspect to it. So we have like a 360 degree view onto our customer experience. At the end of the day, the customer is buying a Conrad. He's not caring, you know, who's our supplier and, mm -hmm. and who's selling there. They want to have a good experience. They, you know, relate this to Conrad, mm -hmm. and we kind of somehow need to connect all the all the, the dots. <laughs> if I can bring something else, I think with this we are just saving data, simple data. That's our first step. But then, when we talk about cross improvement, many, most of us we work internally in our company with boundaries. And I see this as a potential game changer, the first step to do product improvement across yeah. the supply chain. Yeah. Not my supply chain, this supply chain. Yeah. But for that, the first step is we have the same data, or we share data. Then the next step, maybe not next year, but in a couple of years' time, is how we can improve processes in the supply chain. I think that would be a big question. I, I, lo I love that. I think that's a great place for us to leave it. So I want to thank you for coming on. Congratulations on the award. Thanks. I, I think, again, this kind of working together to me is like the true thing that can make EDI a real thing that makes you have to have the processes before you have all of this. So thank you again. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Yes. And thank you for watching this episode from Cellosphere. We're going to be right back with some more. Stay tuned. We have more action-packed finishing up day two. Thanks for watching. See you soon.